Hello everybody and welcome back to another lecture in the SEG 2900 Web Technologies module. So up until now what we've done is we've kind of gotten you into your teams, you're forming your, uh, you formed your product idea, your product definition, and you got your project set up. And then we started to talk about building the marketing website to advertise or market that product. So we kind of introduced you to designing the structure of your website and then coding the structure of your website. So uh, we taught you one of the first languages that browsers understand called HTML. And then uh, last lecture, what we did is we talked about uh, designing the style guidelines of your marketing website and then coding your style guidelines of your uh, marketing website. So uh, that was talking about CSS, which is the second language that your browser understands. Now today, we are gonna give you a brief introduction to JavaScript, which is the third language that your browser understands. Um, now, JavaScript is a very, very popular language, um, and it's gotten a lot of popularity, actually, over the last probably five, 10 years now. Um, it's getting, starting to get very, very popular, um, and it's starting to take over in a lot, a lot of different areas. And JavaScript is actually a, a massive language with a lot to learn. And so we're only gonna scratch the surface in this lecture and just kind of give you a taste of JavaScript and tell you what it's all all about um, but by no means is this going to be a full-blown JavaScript uh, lecture um, you should definitely check out uh, if you're interested in JavaScript you can definitely continue your learning um, at the end of this lecture I'll, I'll recommend uh, where you might go after this and what you might decide to learn okay so JavaScript Okay, so like I said, uh, we've learned that browsers like Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, these kind of languages, sorry, these kind of browsers and applications um, are very similar to other applications on your computer, just like Microsoft Word and Adobe Acrobat. And what they do is they basically interpret files and present them to the user in a human readable way. And so um, we understood that they could read HTML files and they could read CSS. So what they could do is they could process that, that language or that code that you write and then do something and put it on the browser, right? So that's what we kind of got to today. Well, there is actually a third language that browsers understand natively and that is JavaScript. So before I tell you exactly what JavaScript is and how we use it uh, in the web, um, it's good to understand a little bit of background about JavaScript because when we talk about JavaScript, there's actually a lot of terms that are tossed around and sometimes it can be very confusing. You might hear terms like ES6 or ES2015 um, when you're talking about JavaScript and you're like, well, what, what the heck is ES when we're talking about JS, which is JavaScript, and is JavaScript related to Java and all. There's all these terms that are tossed around when we talk about JavaScript. So I want to give you a, a brief background about JavaScript so we can kind of sort out the terms a little bit. Okay, so before we dive directly, before we jump directly into the background of JavaScript, one, one piece of confusion I want to clear up right off the bat is that JavaScript is not Java. They're not the same thing. Um, you know, sometimes uh, when you're starting in software engineering, it's very easy to mix up these, these terms. And um, sometimes if you've only learned one, but you haven't learned the other, you might confuse that there are extensions of each other or something. Um, I've heard students in interviews say, oh, I've learned a little bit of Java and JavaScript. Um, but it turns out they actually didn't do any JavaScript. So right off the bat, JavaScript and Java are actually completely different languages. Um, actually, they, they adopt very different paradigms when it comes to programming. They're very, very different. Um, there's a couple of like things that are similar, like the if statements kind of look the same, the loop statements kind of look the same, but ultimately they are completely different languages. And just because you know JavaScript doesn't mean you'll know Java or vice versa, okay? So JavaScript and Java are completely different, okay? Okay, so what is JavaScript then? Okay, so JavaScript actually starts by understanding what something, uh, something called ECMAScript. Okay, so what is ECMAScript? So ECMAScript, I'll admit, is not something that I'm, I'm completely familiar with, but I know, I know briefly the idea of ECMAScript. Okay, so ECMAScript is actually a specification. It's not a language itself. So ECMAScript is not a language that you program in. It's actually just a specification that a, a group, I believe ECMA is, is the name of the group, they got together and they came up with a specification of a language that people could build. So they came up with, and what, what do we mean by specification? They came up with kind of a bunch of rules and, and, and um, 
rules and kind of guidelines on if you wanted to design, if you want to create a computer language, you could follow these guidelines and you would come up with this, you know, pretty great language or whatever. So they came up with a bunch of rules like, you know, how functions work or how variables work, um, you know, how if statements work and, and loops and how strings work and, and how you work with, you know, strings and, and classes and functions and all this stuff. They came up with all these rules. But that's all it was. It was basically a, a list of rules and guidelines about how to create a language. But it's not a language itself. Okay, so ECMAScript is just the specification on how you would create a language. Okay, so that's what ECMAScript is. And there are there are a bunch of different versions of ECMAScript, actually. So they kind of went through a lot of iterations. And one of the, the most popular ones that came out quite a while ago now is ES5. Okay, so ECMAScript 5. Um, and then more recently, there are newer, newer versions of ECMAScript coming out. So ES6 or ES2015, I believe as it's now called, and ES7, or which is now called ES2016, because uh, that's when the specification was finalized. Um, so these kind of added more and more features to the specification. Um, they kind of started adding fancier things to the, to the specification, okay? So that's what ECMAScript is. ECMAScript is basically just a specification for uh, a language. Okay, and so one of the one of the probably the most popular language to follow these specifications, the most popular language to ad adhere to these guidelines is JavaScript. Okay, so JavaScript is probably the best known implementation of ECMAScript. Okay, so so the inventors of JavaScript, um, and I believe it was kind of. Uh, maybe in the early 90s or so when, when they started creating JavaScript, um, they started to create this language that at the time actually first appeared in web browsers, and we'll talk about that in a second. But when they were creating this, they decided to follow the ECMAScript specification, and then that's what gave rise to JavaScript. And you might be asking, well, why was it called JavaScript? I, I, I read somewhere that they were apparently trying to uh, ride on the popularity of the of the Java language because everyone was like really into Java at the time. So like, oh, we can ride off that popularity and create JavaScript. Okay, so JavaScript is an implementation of ECMAScript. Okay, it's an implementation of that specification, but it's not the only one that exists out there. There's actually a couple of other languages that exist that that implement ECMAScript. Um, I've never used these myself, um, and in fact, I had to do a little research uh, when I was putting these slides together. Um, but JScript and ActionScript, these are other scripts that follow the ECMAScript specification, okay? So if you ever hear the term ECMAScript or ES or ES2015, ES2016, you know, these kind of things, that is the specification um, that JavaScript follows. Okay, so like I said, JavaScript kind of came um, to be, like it was invented for browsers actually. So um, I think it was Netscape was the first browser to do it. So uh, what it was, was back in the day, one of the oldest, one of the older browsers that kind of, uh, one of the oldest browsers that was really popular when internet started becoming mainstream uh, was Netscape. And I, and I believe it was Netscape, I could be wrong on that. But um, when they were creating Netscape, you know, back in the, back in the day, uh, you know, it could understand HTML, could understand CSS, but that was it. And so the engineers behind Netscape decided that we needed something that was a bit more powerful than HTML and CSS because HTML and CSS, what they're what they're good at doing is they're good at displaying information, and you know, you can have you know, buttons and links that kind of like send web requests and stuff like that. But they're a little bit limited in what they do. And so they wanted something that could do a little bit more, uh, you know, that could do things like you could do variable assignment, you could do loops, you could do if, uh, if statements, you could, you know, do some fancy stuff with the HTML that's already on in the browser. So all this stuff, they decided to create JavaScript. And again, the first place it appeared was in the Netscape uh, internet browser. So for those of you who don't know what Netscape is, uh, Netscape is basically like Internet Explorer and, uh, and Edge and Chrome and Safari and, and these, these new browsers. It was one of the original browsers, actually. And so JavaScript was implemented in Netscape, in Netscape and then every, pretty much every other browser after that started implementing JavaScript. So all these other, uh, all these other browsers like Chrome and Internet Explorer and all these things, all of them support JavaScript, you know, just like they can read HTML, they can read CSS, they all read JavaScript. Now, one of the interesting things, though, is 
they don't all follow the exact same standard. Yes, they all you know adhere to ECMAScript and they all generally have the same feature set. But Chrome, for example, implements certain JavaScript features that Safari doesn't, and Internet Explorer doesn't, and then Edge will implement some stuff that Firefox doesn't. And then you have all these kind of different versions of JavaScript, which are probably in the neighborhood of 80, 90% the exact same, but there's a small percentage that's actually different. Um, and actually, that's one, one of the complicating factors of programming in JavaScript. When you program JavaScript, you can't guarantee it's going to run exactly the same on Firefox or Chrome or Edge or, or whatever you end up using. So it's actually one of the complications. But in general, they are, they are pretty similar. So that's JavaScript. So JavaScript started appearing in browsers and is basically supported on all web browsers today. And up until probably... I can't even remember how long ago it was. Maybe, again, five, 10 years, probably longer than 10 years ago, actually, maybe even 15 years ago now. Uh, for the longest time, JavaScript really was only on browsers. That was the only place JavaScript showed up. Um, it wasn't until, again, around, I don't know how old it is now, let, let's guess 15 years ago, um, there were a couple of engineers who decided to use JavaScript on the desktop okay so usually javascript was run in the browser just like html css and javascript you would need a browser to actually run that code well there were a couple of software engineers who got together and started using javascript to build desktop applications okay so build um you know things like microsoft word adobe acrobat or server-based applications and all these things um and you know applications that had had access to things on your computer like file systems um you know like threads and all these things like that and so they came up with a uh, a runtime called node.js and so this is the other really popular place where JavaScript shows up. So the two, again, the two really big places where you would be coding JavaScript is one for browser web applications and two are Node.js um, applications. And that has exploded. And there's been a lot of really, really cool stuff that's been being done on Node.js. Um, so technically you could use JavaScript not only to write web applications, so in other words, applications that run in your browser, but also to, to write uh, desktop applications. Now, even though you can use JavaScript in both these places, in this introductory course that we're teaching you here today, we're going to be concentrating specifically on the browser implementation of JavaScript, okay? So the browser JavaScript only. So a lot of times when you kind of Google around and you start learning JavaScript, you might even see that, uh, you know, when using this in the browser or when using this in Node.js, okay? So in this course, we're concentrating purely on the browser. And you know, in some ways, it's it's a lot it's a lot more limited than what you can do with Node.js, um, and in a lot of ways, it's it's more powerful because it's very targeted towards what you can do typically in a browser. Okay, so that's what JavaScript is. That's where it appears. And again, in this course, we're concentrating specifically on browser JavaScript. Okay, so now you know the background of JavaScript, what ECMAScript is, how you know that JavaScript is not Java. Okay, um, so you know a lot, uh, kind of the background of JavaScript and, and, and what it's not. So what is it actually? What is JavaScript? Okay, so JavaScript is a functional programming language. Okay, well, the more I learn about JavaScript, I'm starting to learn that it's actually more than a functional programming language. It's called, it's sometimes called a multi-paradigm uh, programming language. So in other words, it kind of, it kind of takes pieces from a lot of different, uh, different kind of programming paradigms. Um, and, and basically what that means is, is it has features from a lot of different styles of programming. Okay. But ultimately it is a programming language. Okay. Um, it's not, uh, and the reason, one of the reasons I mentioned this next slide is, is that in, in university, a lot of times we learn object oriented programming, um, class-based object-oriented programming languages. So a lot of times um, in, in undergrad, in uh, programs, we learn languages like, like, like Python or, or, or Java or C Sharp. And these are all um, traditional class-based object-oriented programming languages. So probably in your next semester, you're gonna learn that. So one thing to understand about JavaScript is that JavaScript is, is not like those languages and it does not use classes. It does have things called objects, but they're not similar at all to how um, classes are used in things like Python and Java. So, so just kind of be careful there when you go to learn Python or go to learn Java or C Sharp, that the concept of an object is very different between those languages, okay? Now, there is one caveat to that statement. 
the newer version of ECMAScript ES2015 does have an idea of something called a class, but it's not really implemented the same way as classes are in languages like Java and Python and so on. Okay, so JavaScript is a functional programming language that doesn't use classes for its objects. Um, it has a lot of features um, that a lot of other computer programming languages have as well. Um, it has things like variables. So variables, I don't think I've programmed in any language actually that doesn't have the concept of variable. That's not true, that's not true, there are some. But it has things like variables. It has primitive data types, so things like integers and doubles and strings. Um, it has things like arrays and it also has something called an object. Um, it has math logic, so you can do things like addition, division, uh, multiplication, exponents, stuff like that, you know. Um, you can do string manipulation, so you can add words together, you can, uh, or what we call it, concatenate words together. Uh, you can chop off letters from a word, things like that. It has conditional statements or if statements, so you can do if else, things like that. Uh, it has loops, so you can loop over an array or a collection. Um, like I said, it has objects, um, you know, they're not traditional object-oriented objects, but they are objects. Um, and it has what are called first-class um, function, first-class citizen functions, uh, and we don't really get into that here. Um, but first-class citizen functions is a very powerful tool, actually, that not all languages actually have. It's, a, it's an interesting way to deal with functions. And it has a lot more. So, so JavaScript has a lot of, of, of power, and it's probably one of the reasons, actually, it's so popular. Um, so here, here's a couple. Here's a little bit. Um, here's some example code actually of what JavaScript looks like. Um, so at the very top there, you can see um, how to declare a variable. So to, to declare, sorry, to declare a variable, um, you use the word var for variable, and then you just specify a name and you set it equal to some uh, value. Um, what's interesting here uh, that you you might not be used to in other languages is you don't have to declare the type of variable that it is. Um, there's that's what an if condition looks like. So you say if, and then in parentheses you put a condition, um, and then loops is is very similar to other languages. You can you can do a for loop, and so that'll loop over the numbers from zero to nine, so zero to one less than ten, and it'll output you know we've run this i times. So that's what some JavaScript looks like. So that's what JavaScript is. Okay, that's kind of just a high level overview of JavaScript. Okay, so it's a it's a functional programming language. Um, and again, you can you can declare variables, you can write loops, you can you can do all this kind of stuff, right? So, like I said uh, a little bit earlier, we uh, JavaScript appears in two major places: server side for Node and browser. And in this course, we're concentrating on browser JavaScript. Um, and it's probably the other major reason why JavaScript is so popular, actually, is, is really the web. Because, because the web became so popular over the last 20 or so years, um, JavaScript became really popular because so many people were programming websites and web applications. Um, so a lot of people started learning JavaScript. Okay, so, so, what do we use, uh, so what do we use JavaScript in the browser for? You know, it's like, why would we want to add numbers or why would we want to do loops and stuff like that? So what, what do we use JavaScript in the browser for? Well, turns out today we actually use it for a lot of stuff, but where it really kind of started and what the end result of um, JavaScript in the browser usually comes down to is what we call DOM manipulation. Okay, so DOM manipulation is one of the biggest things that we do with JavaScript in the browser. Okay, and it's probably going to be the first thing that you do actually uh, in, in, in using JavaScript uh, in the browser. So what is DOM manipulation? So what, what is DOM manipulation? So to understand DOM manipulation, you have to understand what the DOM is. Okay, what does DOM stand for? Okay, so the DOM is what we call the document object model. Okay. So what does that mean exactly? Okay, so let, let me let me walk you through this a little bit. Okay, so so uh, either last lecture or a couple lectures ago, we talked about how a web browser works, right? So a web browser basically opens up an HTML file, and it and it basically takes a look at that HTML file and processes it, and then presents it to the user in a human readable way, right? And we, we realized that the browser can actually get this file in one of two ways. You can either go to file open and open a file that you have on your computer, 
or you can type in something in the URL bar and then it goes out to the internet and grabs that file and brings it down. So either way, at the end of the day, the browser grabs an HTML file and looks at that HTML and again, parses it and processes it and then presents it to the user in a human readable way, okay? So let's dissect that piece a little bit. So what, how, how is it doing that exactly? So, okay, so we look at this slide. I'm just gonna shift it over a little bit. Okay, so the HTML file has come back to the browser and let's just blow up the internals of that browser a little bit and look inside there. Okay, so that HTML file comes down and that's what we call the document. Okay, that's a document. All right, so the document comes in and then the browser is gonna look at that document and read that document. Okay, and from that document, it's gonna create something in the browser called the document object model. Okay, so what the document object model is, is it's basically a, a representation of that document. Okay, so it's gonna look at that document and says, oh, you have an HTML tag, and then you have an H1 tag, and inside that H1 tag, you have the words, welcome to my website. Oh, and then you have a P tag for a paragraph tag, and the paragraph tag has some text in there. Oh, and then you have a link. Okay, and then that link has this property on it and all this stuff, right? And so it takes all that data and puts it into um, a bunch of objects in the browser. And that's really what is causing you to see the thing, the, the stuff that you see in the browser is that document object model, okay? So, so what happens is the reason you see the text and all that stuff, that's all contained in the document object model, okay? So, so it's not that it's exactly presenting the document directly, is it converts that document into the document object model and then that's what you see on screen, okay? So that's how a browser works, all right? And so what's really powerful about JavaScript in the browser is that JavaScript, any JavaScript that you write in your, in your code can actually have access to that document object model. So you can actually interact with that document object model and actually start to manipulate things so remember how I said it, like that document object model will have like, oh, it has an HTML tag and an H1 tag. And inside the H1 tag, it has welcome to my first website, things like that. You can use JavaScript to go find that H1 tag and change the text inside. You can even change the color. You can, you can change the content. You can do all this stuff to manipulate the original document. Okay, so the original document comes in and then you change it if you want with some JavaScript. Okay, so like I said, for example, you might wanna change the H1 text from saying hello to saying goodbye. That's something you might do, okay? That's, that's an example of, of DOM manipulation, okay? And that's really one of the big powers of JavaScript is that you can actually programmatically change things in the DOM. So like I said, when we, when we start programming JavaScript in the web, this is the most common thing that we do. So, so I'll give you a couple examples, but what else can you do with DOM manipulation? Quite a bit. You can, you can change an element's text. You can change the text in a tag. You can change any of its attributes. So if you've learned some HTML now, uh, you know that tags of attributes, like an anchor has an href, an image has a source, right? You can change those values. You can change the CSS, okay? So you can change the, the style of, the, uh, of what you're dealing with. Um, you can change what classes are applied to the, what CSS classes are applied to an element. Uh, you can add new elements if you want. You can delete existing elements. You can do quite a bit, right? To really make the HTML almost interactive, okay? You can change things on the fly. So here's a little bit of some example JavaScript code of how you would do that, okay? So, so usually the way you do this is you target some element, okay? You find some element in your document, okay? So my first line there is var my element, okay? Equals document.getElementById, okay? So document.getElementById is some built-in JavaScript in the browser. And I'm gonna find the element that has the ID my header. And once I get that element, I'm gonna change the content inside from hello to goodbye. Okay, so that's, that's an example of something you might be able to do, okay? All right, so let's, let's, uh, let's do a quick demo here. And 
The demo I'm going to show you um, is actually using something called uh, the JavaScript console. Uh, Chrome has this, Edge has this, Internet Explorer has this, Firefox has this, Safari has this. Most major browsers today have a JavaScript console. Okay, I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my code here that we were working on. And I have this H1 tag here. And to make this JavaScript easier, I'm going to give it an ID. Okay, and you can give an ID to any tag you want. Okay, so it's really easy. You just set ID equals and I'm gonna call it my header, okay? So I've given that an ID, and that doesn't do anything in itself, but we're gonna use JavaScript to get, then get that element, okay? So if I go to my browser, and I just refresh my page here, okay? So this header right here has an ID of my header, okay? Now, the easiest way to open up the JavaScript console in any browser is you just right click, and hit inspect element. And then the developer tools will pop up here and you can just click on console, which is the JavaScript console, okay? So this is a way that you can, can temporarily interact with the DOM, okay? This is not typically where you would actually write your code. This is just a place where you can play around with JavaScript just to kind of experience it and experiment with it, okay? This is not, again, this is not where you would write your code typically, this is just, kind of a way to play around with it, okay? So let's do exactly what I said there. So we're gonna declare a variable called myElement, and we're gonna set that to document.getElementById, and then pass in my header. okay? So what that's gonna do basically is it's gonna look at the DOM, okay? Document is really DOM, okay? Look at the DOM, and go through everything and find an element that has an ID called my-header. And once you find that element, assign it to this variable myElement. Okay, so I'll hit enter. Okay. So I've got my element now. And now I can say my element dot text content. Okay. And I can set that equal to whatever I want. Okay. I'm gonna set that to thanks for visiting my website. Okay. Now, before I hit enter, take a look at welcome to my, my website, okay? Watch welcome to my website, okay? And as soon as I hit enter, watch what happens. It just changed, just like that, okay? So you can see how just with a couple lines of code, I can make the structure of my HTML dynamic. It can change on the fly, right? Okay, so that's what JavaScript can do. Okay, I'm sure there's a couple questions about like, well, where, where do I put that JavaScript code and, and when do I execute it and all stuff like that? We'll get into that in a second. But I just wanna show you that's what JavaScript can do. You can take a web page and you can change things on that web page. And that's what we call DOM manipulation. Okay, the other major thing that we can do with JavaScript uh, in the browser is we can use some of the built-in functions. Um, so when you're getting started, uh, besides manipulating the DOM, you might do things like this, like alert, stop, uh, confirm is another thing. And what these are, are just kind of built-in functions that, that work anywhere, um, and they'll do certain things in the browser. So alert, stop, for example, it pops up a little pop-up and says alert. Okay, so let's, let's take a look at that. So if I were to type alert here and say uh, thanks, and I hit enter, you see a pop-up comes up. Okay, so you can kind of do built-in things like that. So they're kind of built-in things in the browser that you can do with a couple of lines of JavaScript code. Confirm is another built-in function that it basically asks the user if they want to do something or not. Um, and you can use this combined with an if statement so that you can say, are you sure you want to do this? And then if they hit yes, it goes one way, and they hit no, it goes another way, okay? So those are the two major things you do with JavaScript when you're starting in JavaScript. DOM manipulation and built-in functions. There is a lot more to do in JavaScript, but that's where you start. Okay, so now that we know what JavaScript is capable of and what we, what we use it for in the browser, and now that we know what the JavaScript console is to just play around with JavaScript, how do we actually put JavaScript into our code? How do we put it into the document that we want to manipulate, okay? 
So there are actually a lot of ways to do this. There are a ton of ways to include JavaScript into uh, into your your code. Um, but if you're starting out and you're just beginning, which again a lot of you are, the easiest way to do this is to put it in the same HTML page that you want to manipulate. Okay, so let's say you have this document HTML page that you created, and then you want to use JavaScript to manipulate it. Okay, the easiest way when you're getting started is just put it put your JavaScript at the very bottom of that HTML page, and you're going to put it inside what are called script tags. Okay. So here's an example. So here we have our, our HTML code. Okay, it's got an open HTML, a body, an H1 tag with the ID my header. Okay, so if you want to add some JavaScript to this, you simply add it at the very bottom. Okay, so you have an opening script tag and a closing script tag, and you have to specify the type. So you're going to say type is text slash JavaScript. And then in there, you can put whatever JavaScript you want. Okay, so the script tags help the browser understand that, okay, whatever's in here is not actually HTML. Whatever's inside here is actually JavaScript. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing is we're grabbing that header and we're changing the text to goodbye. Okay, all right, so let's see that in action. Okay, so here is my HTML code. Okay, here's all my CSS that I put in there. And then here is my h1 tag and my paragraph and stuff. So at the very bottom here, I'm going to put a script tag of type text slash JavaScript. Okay. And then in here, I can put any JavaScript that I want. So I'll put the same thing. I'll put var my element equals document dot get element by ID my header and then my element dot text content equals thanks for visiting okay all right so let's see how that looks so go back to our browser we can close our developer tools now our console because we're not we're not playing around with it anymore it's actually in our code now Okay, so I refresh the page, and thanks for visiting is what shows up. Okay, now some of you might ask, well, how come I didn't see the welcome to my website? Let's refresh it again. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't, I don't see welcome to my website and then changing the thanks for visiting. Well, that's because it's just so fast. Okay, like it renders welcome to my first website and instantly changes it to thanks for visiting, and we don't even get to see it. Okay, we don't even get to see the change happen, actually. Um, it's actually doing it already in the DOM before it even gets to the screen, okay? So JavaScript, JavaScript is changing that for us, okay? Um, but it's doing it so fast that we don't, we don't even see it, okay? So, so some of you might be asking, them, well, then what was the point of that? Why, why, would we, why would we change something and not even see the original one? Like, why, what's the point of even having the original one there, why wouldn't we just hard code thanks for visiting in the H1 tag? That doesn't make sense. That's very true. So, so what we're doing right now is actually a very kind of contrived example. Okay, so let, let's, let's go a little bit further into our, our, our learning here. So usually when we code JavaScript to manipulate the DOM, we don't always, uh, you know, in a lot of ways when we're starting out, we don't usually do it right when the page loads. And in fact, the way that the browser works is the browser reads the document from top to bottom and executes all that code. So it executes all the HTML code and then executes the JavaScript instantaneously, okay? And like I said, if we're doing that, then what's the point of even coding the original HTML? Why wouldn't we just hard code, thanks for visiting my site, right? So doing that is not actually very common especially when you're starting out in JavaScript. So what, what do we actually normally do? Where when we're starting to learn JavaScript, what, where do we actually do DOM manipulation? Well, usually the way we do it is through what we call event handlers, okay? So we're not doing this change right off the bat, okay? We usually do this DOM manipulation in response to something actually happening and not just the page loading, okay? So like I said in our last example, it's kind of, it seems a little bit useless what we did. So usually what we do is we do DOM manipulation 
after something happens. So for example, maybe it says, welcome to my website. And then if somebody clicks on a button, then it changes, um, changes at that point. So only after someone clicks a button or maybe after somebody enters some text or maybe after someone scrolls down the page, maybe something happens. Okay. So all these things we're talking about, these things happening, a, a button click, a hover happening, some text being entered, these are all, all called events. Okay, so these are events that happen in our, on our web page. And what we can do is we can attach event handlers. Okay, so if an event happens, handle that event. So if an event happens, do something, all right? So these are what we call event handlers. When an event happens, run the event handler, okay? So here's an example. So we have, we have the uh, text there, the HTML. So we have the header, my header, hello. And we've added one extra thing underneath it. We've added a link, okay? So we've added a link underneath there, and so called change text. And the, it's pointing nowhere. So anytime you have href with a hashtag or href with a pound sign, it usually just means like a dummy link. So we're not actually going to link anywhere. And we gave it an ID. Okay. So the idea here is we have a header and then we have a link. And if we click on that link, that's when it's going to change. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Step one, what you want to do is you want to declare a function. You want to write a function that's going to be acting as your event handler. Okay, so step one is to write a function that this is what you want to execute when the event happens. Okay, so you actually write the event handler first. You write that function that when the event happen when the event happens, this is what I want to run. Okay, so that's where step one is here. Okay, so step one, I've created a function called my function. Okay, and my function is declared this way. Okay, it's a little bit funny syntax, but basically what you're doing is you're declaring a function here. Okay, so function, parentheses, curly brace, curly brace. And this is the body of the function, these two lines here, okay? So it created a function and inside that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna get the header and change the text to goodbye, okay? So that's just declaring a function, which is different than writing that code right in there. So this is, this is inside the function and the function is only gonna run when an event happens, okay? So step one is just declaring that function. Step two, now that we have that function or now that we have that event handler, we wanna attach it to an event, okay? So this is what we do here. So we have that function and now we say, okay, go get the my link uh, element and whenever that element is clicked on, run my function, okay? So the first line is just getting that link. And then the second line says, okay, I wanna add an event listener, something called event listeners, just like uh, event handlers. So say that when, when a click event happens on the my link element, run my function, okay? So when I click it, execute that, the code that's inside my function, okay? So let's take a look at that. Okay, so into, in my HTML here, I am gonna add another, I'm gonna add a link here. Okay. So my link, and I'm gonna give that an ID of my dash link. Okay. And so instead of having this code just sitting out there, I'm gonna put that inside a function, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of that for now. So I'm gonna declare a new function, okay? So this is my function. And the way you declare a function is with the word function with parentheses and then curly braces, okay? Now in here, this is, remember, this is what I want to happen when I click, okay? So when I click, I wanna grab the header so I'm gonna do document.getElementById, my header. And then I'm gonna change my header to say, thanks for visiting 
my website. Okay, so that's just declaring the function. So again, it's not actually running. It's just it's just this is what I want to happen when it when it when it runs. But right now it's not running. So if I refresh the page right now, nothing's going to change except for that link just appearing. Okay, so I have this my link that's appearing here, but nothing's actually happened yet. Okay. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, if that link is clicked, run my function, okay? So we need to grab that link, okay? So I'll say my link equals document dot get element by ID, my link. Okay, so that grabs the link. And now I say add event listener listen for the click event, and if the click event happens, run my function. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So refresh the page. So now if I click on this, that'll fire the click event and run my function. So when I click on it, you'll see it changes. Thanks for visiting my website. Okay, let's see how, the, let, let's take this a little further and, and, and see how this might look. Okay, so let's say, Let's, let's put this in here. Okay, so let's do, um, let's put a paragraph in here and let's say, did you like my website? Okay, and actually I'm gonna move this link into there so it's centered, make it look a little bit nicer. And I'm gonna copy and paste that link. Okay, so we're gonna have two links. Okay, the first link is gonna be, is gonna just say, yes, I like the website and no, I didn't like the website. Okay, now because they're two different links, we should give them two different IDs, okay? So, so we'll call this the yes link and we'll call this the no link. Okay, so I've added two buttons there, the yes link and the no link, all right? Actually, you know, I'm gonna put them inside their own paragraph so they have some space in between them. Okay, so did you like my website? A yes link and a no link. So let's take a look at that. So refresh. Okay, so did you like my website? Yes and no. Okay. Now what I wanna do is that if they click on yes, I want it to say, thanks for, thanks for visiting the website. And if they click on no, I want it to say, sorry you were disappointed by the website. Okay, that's what I want it to do. Okay. So we're gonna need two different event handlers for each one of these, and we're gonna to have to attach each one of those event handlers to each one of the links, okay? All right, so down here, I want two uh, event handlers, okay? So I'm actually going to actually start from scratch, okay? Let's get rid of these. Okay, so the first function Let's not just call it my function anymore because my function is not very descriptive of what it's doing. Let's actually give it a name that's a bit more descriptive of what it's going to do, okay? So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna call the function say thanks, okay? So I'm gonna declare the function say thanks and what that's gonna do is it's gonna get the header And it's going to change it to say, thanks for visiting my website. Okay. That's my first event handler. Okay. Now I'm going to declare another event handler. Say, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to grab my header again. And then what I'm gonna do is change the text to say, sorry, uh, you were disappointed. Okay. So those are my two event handlers. So if I click on the yes link, it's gonna say thanks. If I click on the no, thing, no uh, button, it's gonna say sorry, okay? So now that I declared the two event handlers, I have to actually attach them to the click uh, events, right? So let's grab the yes link, okay? So to do that, I'm gonna say document.get element by ID, yes link. And to the yes link, 
I'm going to add an event listener on the click event and it's going to run say thanks. So if I click on the yes link, say thanks. And then we're going to do the same thing with the no link. Okay, so no link. So if the no link is clicked, um, then we're going to say sorry. Okay, so declare my event handler and then attach them to the links. Let's see if this works. So I refresh the page. Okay, so welcome to my website. Did you like my website? I click on yes. It says, thanks for visiting my website. If they click on no, it says, sorry, you're disappointed. Okay, and you can click on all of them and it becomes interactive that way. Okay. So that is a brief demo of some DOM manipulation attached to events. Okay. And the thing to know about events is that there are so many events that you can listen to, okay? Here's just a couple. Um, you can listen to clicks, you can listen to focus. So when you focus on an element, like when you're tabbing through text fields, um, it, you can listen to a change event. So if the value changes, so if you're typing, if you're typing inside a text field and the value changes, you can listen to that event. Um, even if you press a key down or, or lift up a key inside a text field, you can listen to that. You can listen um, if a mouse enters or leaves an area. You can listen to scrolls. There's so many events that you can listen to. And then you can write your own event handlers for what you want to do if those events happen. Okay. There's a link down there for W3 Schools. But if you honestly Google DOM events, you'll see all the events that you can play around with. Okay. Okay, so that is a brief introduction to JavaScript and JavaScript specifically in the browser. And this is another tool that you can use to make your website a bit more fancy, okay? So you have HTML to start off with the structure, you have um, CSS to make it look fancy, and now you have JavaScript to do DOM manipulation so that you can do things when people click on things, when people um, type in things, when people scroll things, all these kind of things. These are the things that you can do uh, with JavaScript, okay? So I really encourage you to, to play around with it and see what you can do with it. Even if you get a button doing something, that's already a really great start, okay? All right, so that is what JavaScript is. And now I just wanna briefly talk about where to go from here, okay? Because like I said, JavaScript is a very big field, it's a very big language, and what would you go on to learn from here? If you were really interested in web development or, or Node.js development, you know, what would you learn and what would you, what would you get into? Let's say you've learned the basics and you can figure out event handling and stuff like that, and you're thinking, I really wanna get a job where I can do more and more JavaScript. Where would you go from here? Um, and what are some of the common things that you'll hear out there when you're dealing with JavaScript? Okay, so just kind of a brief preview of the future um, as you kind of go down the road of learning JavaScript. Okay, one of the big things you might hear, although it's starting to lose popularity these days, um, is jQuery. Okay, so jQuery was an extremely popular JavaScript library. Okay, so it was something that when you're using JavaScript, if you imported this library, you could do other things with JavaScript. Um, and JavaScript, again, it's, it's uh, sorry, jQuery, it's losing some popularity these days, but it's still, it's still pretty relevant. And there's a lot of code out there that still uses jQuery. And what jQuery is, it's a library that helps you do things a lot easier in JavaScript. Okay, now JavaScript itself is getting more powerful and so it's kind of catching up, but, but J in the past to do things, like if you want to select all the, if you want to get all the elements that had um, you know, an ID of this, um, or a class of this, or if you want to get all the elements, all the paragraph elements, but that were nested underneath a body element, or you want to get all the, uh, div elements that were nested under a certain other element or stuff like that. These kind of things were kind of hard to do in the past and jQuery made that really easy. jQuery also made it really easy to do, um, um, other things too, um, like, uh, Ajax call. So Ajax is, is a more advanced topic, but jQuery actually made it really easy um, to do Ajax calls. So jQuery was very big, uh, still is pretty big these days, um, but again, it is losing a little bit of popularity, but you might hear about jQuery a lot when you're kind of in JavaScript. 
The second big thing you're going to hear about, obviously, is something that we talked about already, which is Node.js. So if you are getting into JavaScript and you want to write a JavaScript program that does doesn't just run in your browser, but actually runs on your laptop, you know, and maybe interacts with your USB ports or interacts with the files on your system, these kind of things. Um, Node.js is where, where that comes into play. And in fact, Node.js has done something really interesting with JavaScript and has made even the programming and web more interesting. Um, so you can use Node.js to actually do some what we call transpiling or comp compilation of JavaScript code um, to work for the browser. So there's a lot of fancy stuff that you can do with Node.js. So that might be something else that you learn. And if you stick in the web world and you're doing a lot of web programming, um, you're gonna run into uh, all these big JavaScript frameworks. Um, so these are, these are things that help you code JavaScript in a bit more of an organized way. Um, as you can see, I was kind of creating, you know, a couple of event handlers and they were attached to uh, a couple of events. Can you imagine a really big program where you were interacting with, you know, hundreds of events and you had hundreds of event handlers and each event handler was really big and, and it gets really complicated and it gets really messy really fast. Sometimes we call it spaghetti code because it's just a mash of all this code everywhere. Um, when you start to program really complex web, web applications, um, your JavaScript gets really big, you know. Um, for those of you in the class who are just getting started with JavaScript uh, but are really interested in it, I I'll guarantee you that within the first couple months, you're going to have really big amounts of JavaScript code. Um, so what happened in the last, I want to say, five, ten years is some of these big JavaScript frameworks came out to kind of bring some sanity to our, our JavaScript code and make our JavaScript a lot more organized. And some of these include uh, libraries like Angular, React, Vue, and Ember. So these are all uh, frameworks that basically help you write clean JavaScript code and keep all your JavaScript organized uh, in, a, in a really nice way. Um, I myself have only used React. I, I've touched Vue very briefly. I've never used Angular and I've, I've used Ember, um, but I can say React is, is really, really cool. Really love what React has done to the JavaScript world. Um, and, and Vue actually has, I, I, the brief amount that I touch Vue, I can really see its advantages there. React and Vue are actually very, very similar. Um, Angular is a bit bigger and solves a bit of a bigger problem, um, but those are the JavaScript frameworks that you'll be using. So um, think of them as like, you can technically do everything you could do in those languages in just regular JavaScript or what we call vanilla JavaScript. You can just write vanilla JavaScript and do everything that those those things can do. It's that those things just make it a lot easier to do these things, okay? So if you're really interested in web programming, eventually you'll probably run into those things. Okay, so that is it. That is lecture 3.5 on JavaScript. Um, hopefully you found it interesting and, and kind of got excited about what you would be able to add to your website. We'll see you guys in the next video.